What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this finally Friday, August 19th, 2022 date. It is about 12.51 p.m. California time. The latest quake shows a 2.2 earthquake here on the Earthquake 3D globe out here in California. Looking at the latest uh, activity across the globe here shows a little increase in movement across the area of the Philippines and southward towards the Indonesia area. Seeing quite a few twos and threes ramping up there uh, throughout the last couple hours. Also had some activity down here in the South, uh, South Africa region, a 4.7 earthquake coming in uh, just about an hour or so ago within that region there. So let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the map showing uh, that movement out here. Looks like uh, just outside of the Johannesburg region, South Africa, 4.7 earthquake uh, at about five kilometers deep. Haven't really seen too much movement out here in recent times. Um, let's see what we got for the last seven days of activity out here. At least the last week doesn't show anything and I'm sure the last 30 days of activity probably not all that uh, much better. Looks like up north, um, seen a couple small earthquakes but this is kind of the larger one that we've seen here over the last 30 days within the uh, african region 4.7 earthquake once again uh, just outside of the uh, johannesburg region all right what else we got here starting to see a little bit of activity work its way around the uh, divergent boundaries here out in the ocean the pacific or the uh, atlantic ocean i should say and also down here into the south sandwich trench where we're seeing a little activity overnight uh, a couple fives out there, 5.2, the magic number. They're at the South Sandwich Islands region and up north here. Uh, definitely seen a little activity kick up as well into the mid-Atlantic Ridge. Although this activity, uh, there's a couple good, there's a couple sizable earthquakes in there. Uh, some mid fives in this little cluster. Uh, again, this region does see quite a bit of activity on occasion. But uh, it seems as though once we start seeing this movement, we should notice things really kick up here around the South America region and North America uh, as well. So we'll keep an eye on that following that movement out there on those boundaries. Uh, looking at the Puerto Rico area, let's bring back, oh, that is all magnitudes map. That's a little odd. Um, wow, only four earthquakes. That's, I don't know. I, it's been a while since I've seen it that low in the numbers far as the all magnitude map goes there at the uh, typical swarming area if we bring back the last 30 days of activity normally we see quite a bit of movement around this area of puerto rico and just within the vicinity almost 500 earthquakes um, and that's very typical here in this type of uh, plate boundary and this type of uh, trough there's a couple different troughs here to the south and to the north kind of put the squeeze on the uh, puerto rico area but uh, man, only three earthquakes in the last 24 hours. That's a little unheard of. All right, West Coast movement, a uh, little activity today kicking up. Uh, any regions of suspicious movement? Not a whole lot. Uh, looks like we're filling in a little bit along the Ridgecrest area with some small microquakes. And also down south here, uh, kind of towards the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, we are getting a little bit of activity. This kicked up overnight down around the Brawley Seismic Zone. Uh, it's an extensional fault system here of the Sleeping Giant, uh, southern segment of the San Andreas Fault that will no doubt produce an 8.1 earthquake one day. Uh, but for now, just a couple small microquakes there. It doesn't look like it's turning into any major swarm, but uh, again, sometimes these events start off slow and, and then they really progress, but we'll keep an eye on it there in the Southern California region. Up north, not a whole lot going on throughout Northern California, up along the coast range or the uh, Pacific Northwest. A little spotty activity around Mount Hood today and also Mount St. Helens. So some very small microquakes kicking up over the last 24 hours. Uh, looking at the last, or at least the uh, Intermountain West regions and across the rest of the states, not a whole lot going on. A couple small earthquakes throughout the Southern Plains states. Uh, let's check out the Yellowstone thumbnails here and see what we got for any earthquake activity. And it looks pretty uh, looks pretty minimal currently. Not seeing a whole lot of activity out there across the Yellowstone region. So uh, things just kind of typical day out there. Not a whole lot of movement. All right, up north into the Alaska area, about the same. Haven't seen any further uptick in movement across the board. 
Very typical though of the earthquake activity on any given day in that region. Notice things really drying out, really dropping off here along the earthquake areas to the west, western Pacific. Aside from uh, the newer activity noted on the globe here, those are going to be below the 4.0 threshold, so USGS uh, not really showing those, but we are seeing a little increase around the southwestern portion here of the Philippine plate itself, getting in on a little bit of squeezing, so to speak. Uh, let's check out the EMSC model. I will bring this up here real quick and see what we got uh, listed up here on their map. And uh, it looks like there was a 4.8 and a 4.2 in that region earlier. Nothing showing up, though, on the USGS map, right? Look at that. Surprise, surprise, right? Oh, no surprise. All right, let's zoom in here to the Philippine plate and see what we got for the smaller magnitudes. Uh, again, noted on the Earthquake 3D globe, quite a few threes and some twos kicking off here in this area. Uh, so things kind of kicking up a little bit. And also over here around the South American region, we did see a 4.8, uh, the most recent quake here on the map. Uh, a little swarm of activity up and down the Puerto Rico Trench and also the Middle America Trench here. Uh, overnight, it looks like. See if uh, USGS reporting this. Yeah, it looks like they're reporting some of this activity here. Uh, biggest one so far, 4.8 down here into the Chile area, north of Santiago. Uh, seen some deeper movement earthquakes as well into or underneath the Argentina region. 202 kilometers for a 4.4 down there into the Peru Chile Trench. Big island of Hawaii. Uh, let's see what we got here. Not a, not a lot of new movement. Uh, again, somewhat quiet here for a typical day. Only 19 earthquakes around the Big Island and uh, the Pahala region, the source of the activity. Further west, not a whole lot going on, folks. But uh, again, watch uh, when we see these, uh, these boundaries here kind of create some earthquakes. They do put strain... Uh, in many different directions here. Of course, these uh, plate boundaries kind of separate, so you got to follow the arrows, so to speak, uh, west and then east. Definitely could be putting the crunch over here uh, much further east from this region. That's kind of why we, I think that's kind of why we're seeing all the activity there in the uh, South African region following this activity. The divergent boundaries there kind of spreading apart, adding some further strain eastward. All right, let's see uh, what else we got here. Space weather activity, another big one, but uh, things are kind of just uh, active and, and going through these little phases of quiet periods and active periods. Looks like we're uh, currently elevated a little bit into the KP index of four. Uh, there is the Aurora forecast right now. Looks like there is a chance uh, that we could see that at the higher latitudes. Not a whole lot of major um, adjustments to the forecast here. It looks like another CME passage was detected. Uh, looks like the solar wind stream is around the 600 km range and the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field, the IMF, is trending south. So we'll see how that plays out. Looking at the current live data, there's the southward tip trend of the BZ component right there uh, to the south. Uh, density is kicking up and there is a speed as well so it looks like a little glancing blow from another CME again that could elevate conditions a little bit to the G1 category we'll see if that plays out looks like these guys are forecasting maybe a G2 storm today but uh, we'll see we'll definitely see um, <clears throat> what else we got here for solar flare activity notice here on the solar flux chart though <clears throat> getting a little bit of a decline in the activity, notice this starting to slip underneath the sea range here. So these sunspots are, uh, they're still there, but they're starting to die off a little bit. Uh, 3078 was looking pretty awesome last night. Now it's uh, kind of just fading away and, and turning away from us. 3081, not a whole lot of intermixing here of the polarity of the fields. Uh, same with 3082, maybe 3084 is getting its stuff together a tad bit. We'll see if that grows. And then a new development here uh, a little bit further on the uh, southeastern limb of the sun. That'll be 3085 once they uh, do manage to uh, name that uh, region. But aside from that, uh, you know, I, 
I don't know. I kind of get my fingers crossed when we see uptick like this for some large flares and some uh, awesome storms, you know, far as the solar weather goes. But a lot of times they, uh, they kind of just come in for a little bit and then just fade away. No major storms going on here. All right. I'm going to jump off here, folks. Just a real quick look at the fire map here in California. Uh, the latest activity here shows uh, still some movement or uh, some some fires kicking off here into the Willow Creek area. We got this lightning complex fire that started uh, a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago. Still burning out there and 0% uh, containment for uh, one of those. That's the, uh, the Am and Charlie fires, the Six Rivers Lightning Complex, part of the complex. 11,000 acres burned, 0% containment. Um, same for this one, 0% containment, 14,000 acres burned. It is a heavily, heavily dense populated, or uh, not populated, but uh, forested areas. Look at that. Beautiful forest back there. Not going to be beautiful afterwards, but it looks like they are keeping it uh, confined mostly to those regions where it has unlimited fuel to burn. And that could be burning for quite some time with 0% containment on both of those. It's been like that since the beginning. So not for sure what's going on, but nobody seems to want to put it out. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there. We will be back just a little bit later on this evening and uh, see if anything changes out here. Uh, looking over here, I noticed, you guys see that 5.1 up against the Himalayas, it looks like. Did not see that on the USGS map. Not for sure what's going on, but uh, again, they're a little slow on 50% of their reporting. Uh, but you can kind of see where the activity is stretching across right now here on the globe. That's kind of why I run the EMSC model and the USGS. So without the EMSC on here, we would be looking at a whole lot of quietness. So uh, I'm definitely glad that uh, we are able to combine the data from the different agencies on here. And I could, could include the GeoNet servers as well that does monitor activity in New Zealand. I may uh, add that on there as well because I know we have quite a few folks wanting to know uh, what's going on in New Zealand. Right now, there is some activity showing up, threes and fours around the Kermadec, uh, or Kermadec Trench region southward. Um, but most of the activity up north here looks pretty old and um, kind of hard to say right now exactly where this is heading far as the uh, spreading out of the uh, activity goes but we'll definitely keep an eye on it and report back uh, if anything else happens out here so all right guys have a good day enjoy your uh, enjoy your Friday it's supposed to be 109 degrees again today and uh, hundreds in the forecast here in California for the foreseeable future I need a vacation uh, somewhere cold. Hey, but, hey, my computer room's cold. Let me look at the temperature. 63 degrees here in the computer room. Yeah, I like it cold. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the heat unless you're gonna unless you're gonna have some thunderstorms in the mix with the heat. But now, nah, it just I just like the cold weather. I like it cool. Have a good day, folks. Stay safe out there, and we'll catch you guys back tonight. Uh, and, of course, we'll give a shout-out to all our channel members out there a little bit later on tonight. Peace out, guys.